What is going on, everybody? Steve here with Raken Profit over at rakenprofit.com. Coming back to you guys with another live show. And in today's live show, we're going to be talking about Asian antiques that sell on eBay for ridiculous profits from thrift stores and estate sales. So I want to thank everybody for coming to this live show. As a disclaimer and to start to show off, I want to let you guys know that the purpose of this video is to help you to learn about Asian antiques. By no means am I an expert. By no means do I even have you know, a decent amount of experience when it comes to this. Really, the purpose of this video and what we're going to do is we're going to go over 10 Asian antique items that sold on eBay for some pretty ridiculous profits. I'm talking about items that are selling for more than 40, 50 bucks on average. Items that if you could pick them up from a thrift store, a garage sale, an estate sale, or a flea market, you could probably make some good money. So not only is it my hopes that you learn something from this video, but I'm also hoping that I learned something as well. And uh, I can tell you right now, the more you learn, the more you educate yourself, the more you spend uh, your time in the sold listings, studying various items, whether it's you know electronics, glassware, clothing, Asian antiques, the more you spend, the more of your time that you spend learning, the better chance you're gonna have when you're out in the field at a thrift store or a garage sale, an estate sale, to make money. I quit my job about three years ago. I was working at a whole bunch of different jobs from Namco to Toys R Us to Fast Freddy's, which was a gas station, uh, the Cracker Barrel, delivering pizzas. I came from that world and three years ago I quit my job and since then I've been making a full-time income selling on platforms such as eBay, which we're gonna be covering today, Amazon FBA, uh, Craigslist and I've been doing some other things as well outside of the reselling space so I do want to let you know that it's possible to make money as a reseller on eBay on other platforms that are similar and if I can do it you can do it so let's learn together let me jump into the comment section real quick and start to shout some people out again this is a live show so if you are watching live feel free to drop a comment and say hello also you know, smash that like button, show some love. It looks like we're up to about 10 likes so far. So I definitely appreciate that. We got Jobin's Jewels in the house. What's good? Just checking in. What's going on? Dash Sweezy. What's going on, Dash? I always see you in the comments. This guy is awesome. What's up, man? This knowledge is important to know. Just in case I come across it right now, I'm cleaning my space for my online business and watching your video. That's awesome, Dash. Appreciate you checking in. And uh, like Dash said, it's important because you never know when you're going to come across something that you ordinarily would just pass up that you end up buying because maybe of this video. Maybe you notice a specific item uh, out in real life and you're like, wait a second. I think I saw that in Raken's video. So that's really the point of this video. Like I said before, if you're just coming in, this isn't a video where you're going to learn from an expert and you're going to get the specifics and the details and exactly how it all works. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to kind of um, open up your eyes to the opportunities. That's what I'm hoping to achieve. And then from there, go on and do some more detailed research, whether it's searching forums or specific videos. This is really just opening up the door to the opportunities. So Anthony, good to see you. Matt, Adam G. Uh, let's dive into the show and uh, I'll be jumping in and out of the comment section from time to time. So uh, pretty much what I did was I went to eBay. I went under An Asian Antiques. On the left-hand side of the screen, I hit used. I hit $40 for the price to infinite. So it's going to show me items that have sold which were used in the Asian antique category for $40 or more. Um, I left all listings up, so it's going to show me auction styles that have sold and buy it now formats that have sold. I hit US only just to make it a little easier for us so we can read all these numbers in US currencies, and then I hit the sold listings. So what I did is I picked out about 10 items that I thought were interesting that maybe you can find when you're out at a thrift store, garage sale, state sale, and so on and so forth. So with that being said, smash that like button, show some love, and if you're ready to rock and roll, let's dive into this video. First item that I found on the sold listings, which had sold for a really, really ridiculous profit for $685, 35 bids, was this antique Japanese uh, tea set. 
Now, I mean, take a look at the detail of, of, of this set. I mean, it looks absolutely amazing right here. I mean, I'm going to go through some of the pictures, get you acquainted with certain things that this seller did in terms of the pictures. Take a look at the specifics of the item. Looks like there's some dragons there. Look at the detail. Look at the detail on that item. I mean, that that is beautiful right there. So there we go. This sold for $685. It looks like there is about nine pieces. Uh, and as I read the title, it says uh, Tea Set White Dragon Teapot Sugar Creamer Teacup. So it looks like the complete set right here. Let's take a look at the description to see if there's something that we can learn about this. So the description states, if you collect antique Japanese satsuma pottery, keep an eye out on our auctions for five lots of antique fine quality hand-painted satsuma we are listing tonight. Okay, this auction is for a 13-piece circa 1900 Japanese satsuma hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, pottery tea set, which includes a teapot, sugar, creamer, and teacups. After looking this set over carefully, we found one small chip to the edge of a saucer and some light surface wear to the gold glit accents. But that's it. There are no other problems or any restorations to this antique Japanese Satsuma tea set, and below you will find all of the measurements. So I like how this seller took multiple pictures. That's one thing that's very important with anything that you list on eBay, especially something that's going to be high end like this. I mean, it sold for six hundred eighty-five dollars. Take plenty of pictures. That's one thing that I've learned on eBay that really helps to get the item moving out the door, attract more buyers, and also uh, will allow you to minimize the risk in terms of uh, returns. So, lots of pictures. I like the pictures. Uh, they also included the. The measurements right here which is really important and even in some of the pictures they put up a ruler uh, standing up vertically uh, side by side with the item so so the potential buyer can tell exactly how big it is and I actually do that with clothing sometimes or certain items so very interesting item it looks like it's from the 1900s Japanese tea set 13 items I wish I could help you out more with what to look for, uh, but again, just just keep your eye out for this type of stuff, and you can look it up when you uh, when you find it. So that was a pretty cool item right there that sold. Here is a it looks like I'm gonna just read the title because I'm a little confused with what this is. Um, the title states it's a vintage Chinese red cinnabar match safe. So. I'm assuming you put matches in here. I'm just gonna I'm gonna t take a shot in the dark, uh, but it's a small little tiny item that sold for fifty nine dollars. And I was actually going through the sold listings, and uh, there's actually quite a few of these items which have uh, sold. So if I go to uh, Cinnabar Match Safe, um, there were actually quite a few of these which have sold. Okay, for some reason it's not bringing up anymore right now. Maybe I'm typing in the wrong keyword. But anyways, in any event, uh, this is an this is a detailed Chinese red cinnabar match safe, one inch by a quarter wide and two and a half inches long. It has worn areas on the ends. See pictures. I'm just looking to see what this seller is stating so this is interesting right here. Check this out. Check out the other items I have up for auction. We pick and uh, okay, we pick an eclectic mix of items in rural New Hampshire at yard, church, and estate sales. So there you go. This uh, this is actually a reseller who's uh, selling this uh, this item right here, and it looks like they're finding a lot of their items at yard sales, church sales, and estate sales. Keep your eye out for church sales. I found a lot of really unique, abstract, just kind of weird things at, at church sales. So this guy is in New Hampshire uh, showing that East Coast love. I'm, I'm in Connecticut, so not too far from here. But uh, yeah, interesting item. Let's go through some of the pictures. Cool detail. And again, you may think to yourself, you know, Steve, come on now. I'm, I'm never going to find this item. You never know. You really never know. Um, if you're out there searching, whether it's a church sale, a yard sale, uh, a flea market estate sale. You never know. The other day I came across a vintage uh, Griswold um, 
cast iron pan and you know i had watched videos before and i'm like i'm never gonna find that item this is a rare item who you know i'm never gonna come across it it was it was kind of a negative thought that came in my mind and uh, i let it go and maybe a year year and a half passed since i had watched that video and i learned about it and guess what the other day i was at a uh it was kind of like a garage sale slash estate sale um came across a bunch of uh, antique uh, cast iron items. One of them was a Griswold. I picked that up with four other um, pans. I forgot what the brand was called. And uh, ended up getting it for about seven bucks and uh, just recently sold it on eBay for, I think it was 50, 59 or $60, something around there. So you never know. Uh, interesting item right here though. And it's so tiny. Look at it. It's like less than two inches in width. Let's see what the comment section is saying right now. So Fred Frederick is saying, this is a really good comment. It's amazing how many niches there are in the marketplace. There really is. Um, and that's why I, I did this video because I'm like, you know, I can do a video about clothing, which a lot of us are already familiar with. I can do a video on electronics or video games. But I said to myself, let's do something that stretches me me out of my comfort zone. I'll be honest with you. I was thinking about myself first, like what can I learn, but also share with you guys. And I'm like, this is this is making me uncomfortable. And uh, that's the way you got to go. Learn about weird things. Hey, what's going on, Tanya? Thrifty Treasures in the house. Everybody, go to Thrifty Treasures right now in the comments. Subscribe to her. She's got some awesome awesome uh, content. Mario says class is in session. That's right. Let's keep moving on. Good to see you, Mario. Um, so that was a cool little item right there, a Cinnabar match safe. If anybody knows more about that, drop a comment. So this was a cool item that I saw in the sold listings right here. It was an 1880s German bisque portrait Chinese Asian baby boy, six and a half inches. It's a doll. And uh, just check it out. I mean, just looks just looks weird. This is the type of stuff you want to be on the lookout for when you're at an estate sale or at a garage sale. It's just something weird like this. Now, I do want to say, of course, coming from someone who's not an expert with antiques, um, minimize your risk, right? If I was gonna, if I saw this at a, at a, an estate sale or a garage sale, even after watching this video, you know, I probably wouldn't pay more than five bucks for it. And you might think to yourself, really? Like, you saw that it sold for fifty fifty seven dollars. Why would you only pay five? Because one major thing that I've learned is not everything's always created equally. Even if it has this, the same model or the same brand, there's always something, there's so many different factors that come into play in terms of, you know, the value of an item. And I was just recently reading a bunch of comments from the live show that I did with uh, vintage glassware. And a lot of people were saying comments like Steve, like with glassware, brand doesn't mean everything. Color doesn't mean everything. And there were so many different factors that, that came into play with determining the value of a vintage glassware item. And, you know, I'd have to agree that when it comes to this type of stuff, I could only assume that it probably, probably is the same. There's probably so many different factors and that's why you've got to study and research. Um, but yeah, cool item right here, 1880s. So this is definitely a very old item. Let's go through some of the pictures. So it's only six and a half inches. So this thing is fairly small fairly small. Let's see what the uh, description has to say. Uh, circa 1880s, all bis small Chinese portrait doll marked 2K Germany N. Uh, the description states from the seller, I recently acquired one of the largest collections of incredible antique dolls. Doll clothing and accessories I have ever had the pleasure of owning. It belonged to a woman who owned a very famous antique store in Northern California. Each doll or doll accessory she acquired came directly from a family. She believed, just as I do, that in this business as sellers, we are simply caretakers of the past. Our job is to find homes for these unique items we sell as each one has a story and a past. We are the sellers of stories and items that need uh, to reside in the present. So this person's got a cool little... Uh, little description right there, building some character. Uh, I have attached a photo of the dolls from the night they arrived. I was so excited I unwrapped each one. Um, make up the largest portion of the collection. Oh, I'm, I'm reading the wrong thing. Oh, okay. And placed them on my breakfast table to admire them as a group. So uh, this person's pretty off, uh, uh, enthusiastic and passionate about this uh, six cents doll from the 1880s. And uh, yeah, sold for $57.99, 11 bids. So there were 11 
bids on this item. It looks like uh, somebody initially bid at $9.99, or no, the starting bid was $9.99. Looks like A AG came in at $10.51. Then eleven fifty one, so they bid it all the way up to fourteen. They were willing to pay. Someone came in at fifteen and was like, "Yo, AG, this is my doll. You ain't touching my doll." And you want to know what AG is like? Yo, I'm gonna put a penny on top of that. And then this guy came in at twenty one. He's like, "Listen, boys, this is mine." And then there was a war. There was a price war that went down, and AG was like, "Listen, um, you know, I'll die before I don't get this doll." So AG won it, fifty seven ninety nine. Next item on deck. A vintage antique hand carved signed Japanese Buddha Netsuke. I'm not sure what Netsuke means. Figure. So this is interesting right here. It looks like there's a bunch of faces on this. It's either three or four. I can't tell if that other that thing sticking out is a face right there. But there's at least three faces right here on this uh, Japanese Buddha figure. 23 bids. 23 bids on this item. 83 bucks. Let's see if we can find something to be on the lookout for. Because, you know, obviously this looks cool. Um, but I'm even thinking to myself, like, well, what am, how am I going to know? You know, how am I going to know this is worth money? So uh, here we are looking at the bottom. It looks like there's something sketched. I do see a price tag of $100. That doesn't help out very much. Let's see what the description says. Vintage antique hand carved signed Japanese Buddha. Uh, Netsuke figure. This piece is very cool. It is hand carved. So, I, you know, based on my research already, I can tell that these hand carved figures and pieces uh, tend to do well. Uh, it is signed by the artist. Oh, so is that the signature down here? Let's check that out. That might be the signature. Uh, signed by the artist. I can't tell who the artist is. I have not been able to identify the item. Maybe you will have more luck uh, at that than I did. Uh, I want to stop real quick and say, why is this seller putting everything in caps. That's I you know, I'd like com I like I like to hear your comments guys uh, in terms of people who put all caps in their title or their description. What are your thoughts on that? Now, I must admit um, when I when I list my items on eBay, I list it through my phone and a lot of times I'll find a similar item and just sell similar item which uh, essentially repopulates all the items and kind of copies the listing. And then you could change it up. And there's been times where I've been lazy and I just kept the title the way it was and switched a few things up. And it was all caps. But I don't like it. I don't like having all caps. It's almost like you're screaming at the person. I mean, it's, I don't know. I just wanted to put that out there. On the bottom is a sticker that looks to have been there for a while. It has a price and the number. Uh, so yeah, interesting hand-carved item right here. Uh, I wish I could help you out more in terms of how to even look this thing up because you know if I was at a you know a garage sale and it was like three bucks I mean how do you even look this up you know maybe you could type in the keyword Buddha hand carved um, but I don't know what this is made out of I don't know the material I don't know if it's just glass um, so I wish I could help you out more there uh, but I guess the the moral of the story is if you find you know a piece of you know, Asian, uh, some Asian figures, something antique like this with a lot of detail and it looks unique. If it's cheap, pick it up and throw it on eBay. Um, I guess that's what I would do because I just don't know. I don't know how I would identify this. Maybe some folks in the comments can, uh, can respond to that. All right. Next item that sold on eBay, the next Asian, uh, antique item which I've sold is this wonderful, and I'm reading the title, this wonderful vintage pair of two Chinese vases, 10 inch vases. And uh, I can already tell um, that this is made of the highest quality. I mean, look at the, look at the color, look at the attention to detail. And I was doing a little research before the show on vases and uh, a lot of these vases tend to do very, very well. Um, type in Asian vases and uh, I'll let you see what I'm talking about here I mean this one sold for 75 74 99 305 698 I mean these Asian vases are uh, pretty freaking popular so I mean just check out the sold listings here again I wish I could help you out more with what to look for um, but really like I said and I've, I'm gonna say it again this video is intended to open up your eyes you know and that's half the battle how many times have you passed by an item and then a year later you watch a video and you're like holy mackerel I passed that item and I didn't even look it up 
And then you say to yourself, why didn't I look it up? And you're like, I don't know. The reason why you didn't look it up is because you weren't even aware that items like that sell on eBay. It's half the battle. I'm telling you guys, I've been doing this for three years. I've messed around in tons of various niches. You've got to be aware. And uh, this is what it's all about, building up the awareness right here. So those vases sold for $216.50, 19 bids. Uh, looks like brass base metal, two carved wood stands. So from the 1920s or the 1950s, turquoise enamel, uh, underside bottom base. Uh, this is interesting. View photos. Please note lighting variations, flash, and reflections. So what this seller is pretty much saying is the color of this item depicted in the picture may not, a, not, may not be the exact color when they receive it due to the flash um, and various factors, which I can understand. Sometimes it is a challenge to you know, depict an item in its natural form. Uh, but yeah, cool item right there. Let's go into the comments section and see what folks are chit chatting about. Looks like we got about 53, no, 57 people watching live right now. So again, thank you all for uh, watching, watching this live show. If you are enjoying this video and maybe it's opening up your eyes a little bit, you know, do me a favor and hit that like button. Also, you know, Say hello in the comments. Let me know where you are from, what's your name, and where are you uh, located in the country or out of the country. If you don't know who I am, I'm 29 years old. My name's Steve Rakin, a.k.a. Rakin Profit from Connecticut. Been reselling for about three years and always looking to learn and expand out into other niches. So uh, Roots Radical 808 says, thanks, Steve. I've been expanding my horizons on items and things to resell. That's what it's all about, guys. You've got to expand and learn about you know, a wide array of items because the more you know about more different types of items, I guess that's the easiest way to say it, uh, the better chance you have of walking out of a thrift store, walking out of a garage sale, walking out of an estate, estate sale, a pawn shop, a retail store with actual items in your pocket that you can either then list on eBay or Amazon or whatever platform you choose. So you got to learn. Uh, if you are looking to learn more about various items, get the free book that we have in the description. It's called 100 Amazing Items to Resell. And you'll find a whole bunch more of different types of items in a lot more detail that we're actually experts in. So uh, get that free book. First line in the description, 100 Amazing Items to Resell, free download. Um, let's see. Movie Star Memories, South Texas here, selling on and off since 2003. Glad to have you in the house, Texas. We got Thrifty Treasures from Texas as well. We got Anna Hamilton from the UK watching. Gina from Texas. We've got a lot of folks from Texas right now. That's cool. Dash Sweezy says, yo, my name is Kobe. I live in Florida. I'm going to remember that. Dash Sweezy's name is Kobe. So good to see you, Kobe, uh, living in Florida. Hopefully you were okay with the storms in Florida lately. The weather was atrocious over there, I heard. So hopefully everything is all right. South, Car South Carolina, South California, Southern California in the house, Miami, Florida. So good to see you guys. So uh, Beba De Niro says, I probably see those stuff a lot and just don't recognize it. I need to learn and get better on antique stuff. I agree. Uh, someone says, I don't think caps uh, on eBay description is bad. Caps aren't good for a text. So let's move on to the next item that's sold. Now, this is a really, really cool item. This looks like a uh, some type of glassware item that holds dice. So it's pretty cool. It's small, though. Check it out. The dime is right next to it, and it's like not that much bigger. Um, looks like there's some dice inside of it. So that's cool. Bone carved and shrimp shod large dice with hidden sliding door and six mini dice inside. So uh, I don't know much about this item, but it looked cool. I mean, you got the kitty cat on the front, um, a little little mouse on the side, some dice inside. I mean, now this is an item that I would remember, and this is an item that I probably would have passed up on before. Um, I don't know what shrimp shod means. If someone could help me out, bone carved and and. and not shrim, it's scrim, scrimshod. Beg my pardon. Scrimshod, large dice with hidden sliding doors inside. A seller does not offer returns, but you are covered by eBay money back guarantee. Um, 
you know, in terms of offering returns or not offering returns, I, I always recommend that you just offer them. Um, sometimes I don't, but I'm really trying to get away from that because it doesn't look good to the seller, uh, to the buyer, excuse me. It doesn't look good um, in terms of trying to become a top rated seller. And to be honest with you, if somebody wants to get a return, they'll get it anyways. And they may leave you a negative feedback just because it was more challenging for them to get that money back. So uh, one thing I've learned, and lately uh, I've been having some issues with negative feedbacks on eBay, uh, to be honest with you, and tried to get them removed. And uh, it's crazy. Yeah, good luck getting anything removed. Holy mackerel, this is so crazy right here. I'm looking at the, uh, the description, item location, Tallinn, Connecticut. Do you know I live about... 10 minutes away from Tolland. So that's pretty funny right there. This guy or gal sold this item. Uh, the item location was 15 minutes away from me. So that's really interesting. I got a question for you guys. Have you ever sold an item on eBay and when you went to go ship it out, you noticed that you were shipping it like a couple minutes away from your house or like 10 minutes or 20 minutes away? I've actually shipped something to the same street that I was on before craziest thing ever so weird I mean what are the odds of that thousands and thousands and millions of people accessing it and your buyer is on the same street as you I mean that's crazy let me know if you guys have any stories here up for sale which sold was this large 14 uh, 14 inch uh, figurine and it looks like you burn incense uh, inside of it. So this is a pretty cool item. I would actually like to have uh, something like this out on like my my uh, back patio, kind of burn some incense, relax, do some meditation. You know, I love incense. Uh, a lot of tarnish, dirty inside, no damage on enamel. Lovely estate fresh. So if I had to guess, this person probably buys from estate sales or maybe sells estate sales for uh, for folks. I'm not sure, but uh, this sold for one thirty five eighty eight. Looks like this was $37.85 in shipping. They are shipping it priority mail. So uh, pretty ballsy right there, shipping it priority mail, a big heavy item like this. I'm assuming it's heavy. Um, when I sell heavy items, I always like to go typically kind of a slower route because it's it's typically cheaper. Um, you know, whether it's uh, Smart Post through FedEx or UPS sometimes, or probably not UPS. I'd say either uh, Smart Post or maybe even depending on the size of the item, if it's heavy but it's smaller, you may be able to get it into a regional rate A or regional rate B, if, you know, dependent upon the location and the size, of course. Uh, but they went priority, 37.85 is what they shipped it out for. 135.88 on this item. Let's take a look at the description real quick. So this is cool. Uh, note, KC area customers, I offer a pickup for my house to save money on shipping about the shipping cost. The item is large and heavy, just like I thought, and might be shipped in two separate packages. If the actual shipping cost is lower than I estimate, I will refund. So, yeah, this, this customer is already concerned with the, uh, with the shipping. Um, and sometimes it is cheaper to split the item up into two packages and go flat rates each uh, versus just getting it in a big box and getting hit with that, that big priority. Um, shipping fee but right now i'm going to tell you guys the key the key to getting really good shipping rates first of all ship through the ebay platform and number two just look through all the options you know see what it costs for ups see what it costs for fedex see what it is priority uh look to see if you can fit it in a flat rate look to see you know all your different options and whatnot all right, the next item that I found on eBay that sold under the Asian antique category was this antique Chinese uh, opium oil lamp. So the beginning of the 20th century. I actually just passed on a bunch of oil lamps the other day. I was at an estate sale. Um, it was kind of like a garage sale, estate sale. The same place I, I picked up the, that Griswold cast iron pan with a couple other pans. Um, I had seen some oil lamps there. Uh, there was a model on it when I flipped it over, but it just it wasn't worth uh, enough money. But uh, this one went for $129. You can see the really cool design down here. Uh, the ones that I, that, that I were looking at didn't have any of this uh, cool design or anything. Uh, but here's an oil lamp. Always look up oil lamps. Oil lamps can bring you in some really, really good money. Uh, again, I'm not an expert when it comes to oil lamps, but uh, check this out, $129. All right, let's see. 
Due to opium eradication campaigns in the 19th and early 20th centuries, opium lamps are now exceedingly rare. Heat, not light, was the purpose of an opium lamp. So the purpose of an opium lamp was heat. It wasn't light. So a lot of people, they think that, you know, um, a lamp, the, the purpose of it is to give light to be able to see. But I guess this this was used for heat. So that's pretty interesting. Opium was meant to be vaporized, not burned. The drug vaporized at a relatively low temperature. So an opium lamp was an oil lamp was an oil lamp whose purpose was to harness and channel just the right amount of heat upon a very small surface. This is the reason for the very distinctive funnel-like chimney. And let's take a look at the item one more time so you can kind of see what we're talking about here. Uh, let's keep reading because I'm actually learning something interesting. Opium lamps were made from a vast range of materials, mostly commonly brass and pactong a nickel-like alloy, as well as glass. The cheapest opium lamps were mass-produced from molded glass, while some of the most luxurious examples were meticulously crafted from layered peaking glass. Vietnam was once known for its highly ornate opium lamps as chased silver. So there's a little history uh, on these uh, opium lamps. Again, the purpose of this opium lamp from, from, those, from the previous reading was to produce heat instead of light. So that's pretty cool. $129 right there. Now this is a cool item right here. Uh, this is a pipe, but it's no ordinary pipe. And I'm going to read the title. Ch Chinese antique hand-carved etched Dragon green jade stone pipe. So it looks like some jade stone is the material. Here is the pipe. Sold for 45 bucks. All right. Let's take a look at that item. Cool little design etched into it. 45 bucks. So if you're ever at a garage sale, estate sale, and you see something like this, pick it up. It looks like it's sold for $45. Uh, let's take a look at... Um, some other ones that have sold. So let's go, let's type in Jade Stone Pipe and let's see if any, any other ones are selling. Because one thing I've learned is you can't take everything at face value, you know. So let's take a look. Uh, so that scares me. Here's one that sold for $198, $1950, uh, 1950 it looks like there's a lot of really cheap ones out there. So uh, be careful with this. Um, I'm not sure what made that one so valuable. Maybe it was that it was etched in or I'm not sure, but uh, be careful. Last item I want to share with you guys when it comes to Asian antiques and what to buy to sell on eBay for ridiculous profits from thrift stores and estate sales and more is this porcelain antique Chinese parrot. Check this thing out right here. This sold for $378. Um, now, I'm not big in antiques personally, and I don't know why somebody would pay that much for it, but, uh, you know, it must be the beautiful design. I mean, it is it is a really nice design. It looks great. The color is amazing. A lot of attention to detail. Check this guy out. He's watching you right now. $378. Bucks. Uh, perfect condition. No chips, no cracks. Needs cleaning. I did clean, but not too hard. Did not want to damage. So it looks like they got the, the measurements of the parrot. Uh, I do my best to provide an accurate description and best photos I can. Due to different monitors and settings, colors may vary slightly. My item up for sale is not new and may show signs of wear. So, yeah, cool item right there. Sold for 378 bucks. So I'm going to dive into the comments real quick. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video so far and maybe just kind of got you excited about these types of items, uh, opened up your eyes and you know, now when you're out at estate sales or thrift stores, you can try to find these items. Now I do want to say, I'm going to give you the advice that I would follow for myself. If you find any of these items out in the field, you know, don't pay up big bucks for them. Don't pay up 30, 40, 50, 100, 200 bucks for these items. If your brand's making new and you don't know what you're doing, you know, just just buy the items that are dirt cheap and learn from your experience. So that's what I would do right there. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of opportunities on eBay, guys. You know, there's so many niches, so many categories out there. Um, I mean, the opportunities are really endless. So if you're in this for the long run, and you plan on reselling on eBay for five years, 10, 15, 20, just continue learning. 
right? Always take the time to learn about something new, a new category, spend time in the sold listings, and you never know, you know, a year, two years, maybe even five years down the road, you find the item and it makes it worthwhile. So I'm going to update the comments, see if there's any questions coming on in. I love the parrot. What's it made of? I believe it. I believe it's a porcelain. P o r s e p o r c e l a i n. So roots radical eight o eight says I see tons of Asian items like this in Hawaii. So somebody asked. Uh, this is actually a really good question from Chicago Crown Hustler. Hey Rakin. Sure, this stuff's cool and profitable, but do you ever uh, come across this stuff? Not doubting you, but I never see this stuff out there. Um, you know, I don't really see this stuff either because I'm typically looking for certain types of items, right? So I'm typically looking for clothing. I'm typically looking for electronics. Um, I'm looking for bicycles. I'm looking for books. And I typically don't go down the uh, the glassware aisle, which you know, if you're if you're going to thrift stores, you're probably going to find this obviously in the glassware aisle. So um, I typically don't see this stuff because I'm I'm not looking for it. Um, if I was looking for it, do you think I could find this stuff? I don't know. I really don't know. But uh, I'll tell you right now, if you don't put yourself in a position to succeed, you're never going to. Um, if you don't, and I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you never study it and realize it's out there and, and build the awareness. You're never gonna find it. So uh, Chicago, that's a great question. Um, but you know, there was times that I studied the sold listings for clothing. I mean, I used to study the sold listings for items that sold for three hundred to five hundred. Super rare, hard to come across brands. I mean, brands that no one ever finds, like Keaton, K I T O N. And I found that brand like four times. I never thought I was gonna find it. So. Um, you know, you never know. You really never know. I mean, just just like the other example I mentioned, that Griswold cast iron pan. I never thought I would come across it. A year and a half later, I found one. So, um, you know, good question though. What's up, Nelly? Thanks, Steve, for sharing and keeping us on our game. You are welcome. That's what I'm here for. Really uh, grateful to have you guys here hanging out with me. Just going through the comments real quick to see if there's any other uh, questions that I could answer. It looks like we got Phoenix, Arizona. We got Julie McIntyre in the house. What's up, Julie? I used to have a really good friend who lived in my neighborhood. His name was John McIntyre, so maybe you're related. Um, let's see. So, yeah, I don't see any more questions coming on in. Um, Okay, I see one right now. What's better, eBay or Amazon? I mean, that's up for debate, right? You talk to 100 people, 50 are going to say eBay, 50 are going to say Amazon. Um, you know, there's a lot of items you can't sell on Amazon that only go on eBay, like, you know, used shoes, used clothing, you know, a lot of antiques and stuff. I mean, you just, there's no listings created or it's restricted on Amazon. So in that case, I would say eBay. And then there's other items like books and certain electronics and, you know, new in the box items and stuff like that that do much better on Amazon plus you can leverage their warehouses by shipping to the fulfillment centers and in that case I would say Amazon so you know it really depends on your personality what you're selling and, and your goals and whatnot But yeah, I appreciate all the likes, guys. It looks like we had about 75 people watching live. So I do want to say right now, if you are watching live, be sure to hit that like button. That's that's the best way to let me know that I'm doing a good job and that you're enjoying these videos. And the more likes I get as a content creator, um, if you ever start a YouTube channel of your own, you're going to know that it's like the the likes are like the uh, – it's like the, the fuel. It's like the fuel to the engine, the gasoline. You know, it keeps us going. It lets us know we're doing a good job. So, um, you know, definitely appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, like I mentioned before, if you want to learn more about what items to buy and sell on eBay and even beyond Amazon, Craigslist, get the free guide in the description. It's the first line. Or you can go to uh, greenroomuniversity.com slash free book or rakenprofit.com slash 100 amazing items. Or hit the description, uh, first, first line, get that book. 
Thrifty Treasures says, great show. Really enjoyed the research. Thank you. Appreciate it, uh, Tanya, coming on in and looking forward to uh, hanging out with you again sometime in real life. It's always fun meeting up with you at the Green Room meetups and whatnot. Um, someone asked, how would you identify something with an Asian language mark on the bottom? What I would do is I would probably utilize um, – the Facebook groups. So if you're in the green room, I would post it in there. If you're not a green room member um, and you're a part of maybe like um, Jason T. Smith's group or uh, Golden Finger Pickers group or any of the big Facebook groups out there, paid or free, doesn't matter. Um, I would probably take a picture and then I would post it in there and ask somebody like, is there any, is there any, you know, uh, antique, Asian antique uh, experts in the house? Can you let me know? Or I'd probably search for some forums. There's a ton of forums out there in glassware, uh, antiques, stuff like that. I would join uh, those forums and I would post a picture. You know, you don't have to be an expert in everything. A lot of people think that you have to know it all. I mean, I don't know Jack when it comes to the overall big picture of, you know, all the best items to buy and sell. Even with, with items that I've been selling for so long, there's so much to know. You know, even in clothing, electronics, and books, there's so much to know. You don't have to be like the top dog, guru, expert, know-it-all to be successful. You can utilize other people's knowledge, and you know that's what you can do on this on this YouTube video. You can ask me questions or other people in the comments, post things to Facebook groups, um, you know, network and make friends with people. That's why we're such big um, proponents of joining. Um, communities and, and getting a part of uh, how do I say it getting a part of a group that is all like-minded towards one goal because you build relationships with people and then you can have them there in your corner and you learn okay this guy's great with electronics this guy's good with antiques this guy's good with uh, silver and gold and, and when you ever have a question you could ask them so you don't have to know it all just just ask somebody who knows more than you that's what I do all the time or use Google right mr. Sadie Google is our best friend <clears throat> so a lot of people are saying yeah Google images really helps a lot The Taekwondo, you are not pathetic. You're you're motivated, and uh, you know you're you're willing to do what it takes. So keep pushing forward. Anyone lucky at pawn shops? I love pawn shops. I've actually got a book that I've written on uh, pawn shops. I believe uh, if you go into the description um, in this video, I have it down below. Where is it? Uh, pawn shop profits, rakeandprofit.com slash pawn shop. Um, I actually wrote a book on an ebook on pawn shops. I love, I love buying from pawn shops. Uh, it is a little more advanced. So if you are brand new to reselling on, uh, eBay, Amazon, uh, I probably would pass on it for the time being. But if you're intermediate, advanced, and you're selling mostly on Amazon, I find pawn shops are best for Amazon flips. Uh, definitely look into it. Start showing up to your pawn shops. I mean, I buy a lot of uh, computer items, doing the box items. I bought books, DVDs, CV CDs, video games, consoles, cameras, uh, so many things. There's there's a lot of opportunities at pawn shops, but uh, it's it's a lot more challenging than than a thrift store, or garage sale, or an estate sale. Because you're you're buying from resellers who know what they're doing, but just like anything, you know, certain resellers they are they're having cash flow issues, or maybe an item doesn't sell as well in their particular area, and you can take it and sell it online. So there's definitely opportunities there for sure. <clears throat> so Kobe is saying, my next step is to create a YouTube channel. Any advice or tips? Um, you know, I would just, I would just get started, start creating really good content. Uh, a lot of people make the mistake of, you know, they start a YouTube channel and they think, you know, I've got to be the authority. You don't have to be the authority. There's a lot of value in creating a YouTube channel and just tracking your journey. And that's kind of what I do. I don't always come off and I know it confuses a lot of people, but I don't always come off as the expert. I'm really not an expert in a ton of things. I'm good at a few things. But a lot of things are more or less me learning and, and trying to figure things out. And that's what I like to do on my channel. I like to um, bring people along on my journey and help people and add value and learn together just like this video, right? So um, Dash or Kobe, whatever whatever you want me to call you, um, if you start a YouTube channel, you don't come off like you have to be the authority. Um, I think a lot of people are trying to be the authority when they're not. And I think there's a lot more value in just sharing the journey and you know kind of sharing updates and, and things that you learn instead of like having to come off like you know it all uh 
Beba says, dash content, give content every single day. Think how to help others. Yeah, content is king. And there's actually, um, I'm actually doing this new thing now. I don't know if you guys have seen it on my channel, but what I'm doing now, and this is helping to get more content out for my channel. And one thing you got to realize is people are coming to your channel, dash, uh, because they want content and if, if they trust you and they like your videos they want more content so one thing I'm doing lately is I'm taking my live shows and I'm posting a live show and then what I'm doing is I'm actually taking out little chunks of that show like say for example I answer a specific question I'm taking out that two minute chunk and I'm segmenting it off and I'm uploading that as a separate video and people are finding a lot of value in that because you know people are busy some people don't have time to watch a whole hour show so if you could take out the little uh, gold nuggets out of it and turn that into its own video you're adding value to your audience but you're also creating more content for your channel as well so uh, that really helps out a lot somebody says having a hot assistant wouldn't hurt either that never hurts uh, hey guys, I just got started on FBA and yesterday went out with my best friend and we found a lot of deals at our Walmart and Walgreens. Our profits according to Amazon was $80 in our first day. Yes, yes, great job Fernando Gomez. That's really cool. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of opportunities lately at these big box stores, Walmarts, uh, Walgreens, Targets. Uh, my Goodwill's been getting a lot of clearance from Target lately. That's been marked down significantly. Uh, so now's a great time. There's a transition right now where these stores, these big box stores, are trying to get rid of all their summer toys. So you'll notice if you go to Kmart, they're all at 30%. Um, big Lots, uh, Walmart, Targets, they're all, they're all getting rid of the crap right now. So it's a good opportunity. So nice job. Somebody says avoid negativity at all costs. It drives people away. Excellent point right there. Do you ever go to auctions as source for items? I've, I don't think I've ever been to an auction my whole entire life. Um, I know I got to go to one because it's an experience based on what my friends have told me. There's actually an auction house they just built down the street from my house. So I'm going to go one of these days. Maybe I'll document it. Uh, Beba Dinero says, Steve, you're the best. I'm joining the green room hopefully this Friday and doing it because of you. You give great content. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, the green room will definitely help you out a lot. I think we're up to about 700 and almost 750 members over there. So uh, there's a lot of great content over there. There's a lot of great people. If you guys had a chance to watch our live show we did the other day on my channel, uh, talking about Amazon restrictions, we had a couple of green room members come on. We had John Cleeter, who's a six-figure seller, Robert Benares, and Jason Clark. Jason Clark actually posted his numbers the other day in the green room and just blew my mind. It was it was ridiculous. He did what it takes me four to five months to do on Amazon. So a lot of great sellers in there. We got training videos, free books, courses, private shows. So yeah, I think you'll really enjoy it. Kobe says, I am working on a product I just created and currently making a website for it. I want to get it in before Q4. Nice work, man. Check out your CVS market, 75% down here in Arizona. Here's the problem with CVS right now that I'm that I'm seeing. A couple of years ago, I used to kill it at CVS, you know, when they used to transition out and uh, clearance out their toys. But the problem with CVS now that I've noticed is they're starting to uh, bring in a bunch of crappy private label products, you know, a lot of off-brand crap. Um, and sorry to kind of be negative about it, but I, I've been into the CVSs and I see they're clearancing off their stuff and I'm like, this stuff has no value um, at all. You know, they used to have really good brands, Disney stuff, and I just, I, I don't see a lot of good stuff. So I, maybe I got to poke into some other CVSs, uh, but maybe some of you folks have noticed that, it, noticed that as well. A lot of these big box stores, some of the smaller ones, um, they're starting to bring in a lot of private label junk. When do you have live shows? I would like to be notified. Um... I have live shows typically a couple times per week. I, I guess the best way to be notified is get the free book in the description. Um, I typically send out a uh, email to the list. Um, that's our green room uh, email uh, newsletter. So typically we'll send out a notification to that list. But if not, just follow me on Facebook at uh, Rake and Profit or Steve Rakin. Probably Rake and Profit's the best. Like that page. And I typically send out a notification. But sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? I'm just doing this spur of the moment. And uh, I don't update it anywhere. But, you know, if you're subscribed to me on YouTube, you know, check back for, for um, updates and whatnot. Anyone flip Bob Revolution strollers? Uh, I flipped a couple of them. There's a lot of money to be made in those. Uh, my buddy, who uh, is one of the one of my partners in the green room over at greenroomuniversity.com, 
he's been flipping Bob strollers for years now. And uh, we might have to have a private show in the green room just about Bob strollers because there's so many opportunities with those items. Anyways, guys, uh, I think that is about it. Again, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. Uh, leave a comment after the show. Let me know what you thought. If you have any future suggestions for live shows, leave a comment as well. But with that being said, I appreciate you guys all watching. Be sure to go out today. Make it happen. If you've got items to list, list them up. If you need more items to sell, go sourcing. You never know when you will get lucky. So with that being said, keep on picking and making that money, and I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.